Okay, this is fx uh, c60, and we're gonna take basically matrix B, and we're gonna find sets that span its column space, but we're gonna have them also meet some additional conditions. The first condition is that it illustrates the definition of column space, and of course, that's kind of the brute force. So we'll call the set Y, and of course, Y in this case is just gonna be the set of the four column vectors of B. So 2, 1, negative 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 0, 3, and 1, 1, negative 4. And that will be vector set y, and y will equal the column space of b because it is the columns of b. So this is as simple as it gets, but of course it's messy. This does much more than we need it to. And we'll find that that set doesn't really work very well. Again, a linear combination of these will certainly find the column space of B. So that's what we would want. Uh, we can do that by just throwing the spanning set symbol around and then say that this then would be equal to the column uh, space of B. Perfect. Okay, the second criteria we want to meet is that we want uh, the vector set Y. Y is linearly independent, and I also want y to be a subset of b, which means I do want to choose vectors that are within this set, but I want to do so in a way that makes a linearly independent set. And the easiest way to do that is to uh, do the reduced row echelon form of the extended vectors. So that's what I'm going to do, or the extended matrix. So I'm going to take uh, 2, 1, negative 1, uh, 3, 1, 2, 1, 0, 3, and 1, 1, negative 4. And then I'm going to fill in as much of the identity matrix as fits. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Okay? And then we're going to take this guy, this extended matrix, and we're going to put it through the RF process. And so this is what we'll end up with when we're done. This is 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, and negative 1, 1, 0, and 2, negative 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, and then some fractions. 2 thirds, 1 third, and negative 7 thirds, and then the last row is also fractions, negative 1 third, uh, one third and negative one third. Okay. Well, there we go. As we can see within the space of the vector, we get these two pivot columns. We also get a pivot column way over here, but that's outside the space of the vector. That's actually inside the space of the, uh, of the identity matrix. So this one doesn't really count as a real pivot column within the original matrix. It's actually going to make the beginning of our L matrix over here. But when it comes to selecting which columns do I select as the subset, it's one and two. So now my Y is actually going to be equal to two, one, negative one, three, one, two. And these uh, vectors span the same set. So that's the spanning set. Uh, they span the same set now as this one, uh, but uh, they're linearly independent, and of course, they're much easier to apply than this big, great big set. So this would also equal the column space of B, okay? Okay, for number three, the third criteria we want to meet, in addition to spanning the column space, is we want it to be linearly independent, and then we want a pattern of zeros and ones at the top of each vector. So we want Y to once again be uh, linearly independent. And we want a pattern of zeros and ones at the top. And of course, we can get this by using uh, theorem BRS. That's what we're going to use. So theorem BRS, which is the basis of the row space. And in doing so, what we want to do is take the RF from B and look at its transpose, okay? So uh, if we transpose the RF from B itself, and we transpose it, so we want B 
transpose, and we want the RF of that. Well, this is what we end up with. We end up with 1, 0, 0, 0. And again, it's transposed, so now the columns are uh, 4 tall and 3 wide. Uh, the next column is 0, 1, 0, 0, and then 3, negative 7, 0, 0. Well, as you can see, we only get two non-zero rows, and that's row 1 and row 2. And so if we transpose those back to columns, that's what VRS says, is that the rows that are pivot rows end up becoming columns in the uh, column space. So a third representation of Y is that it's 1, 0, 3, followed by 0, 1, negative 7. And this, of course, is a much more efficient spanning space because it's linearly independent. I can see that. This one was linearly independent too, but I couldn't see it. Uh, there's no 0, 1s adjacent to each other that shows there's only one solution for each of the uh, coefficient variables that, that would make it true for any given set. Here I can see that right off the bat. If, no matter what I use to build these, uh, this top row is going to mean that whatever solution vector I append this to, uh, uh, the first variable will be that value, the second variable will be that value, and then this will be, need to be a relationship between those two variables in order for this third solution, which means we can pick the kind of solutions that this would fit for. Once we know the first two, there's a formula for generating the third, okay? You can see how useful this is in comparison with the other column spaces. This column space, this column space, almost useless compared to this one. And then the fourth one reaches back to an earlier section. It basically utilizes that, uh, that matrix portion in the lower right hand corner uh, this guy right here this is called the L matrix and of course what we want now is a set for Y that's linearly independent again but now we want a pattern of zeros and ones uh, at the bottom And in order to do that, what we want to do is exploit uh, the BNS. And that's the basis of the null space of this, the L uh, uh, matrix right there. So it's 1, negative 7 thirds, and negative 1 third. And if we apply the rules for the BNS, then we get two column vectors. Uh, the first one is 7 thirds, uh, 1, 0. And the second one is uh, one third, zero, one. And that basically is the basis of the null space for this guy. And of course, that's another representation of y equals. And once again, just like this one, it's very, very easy to apply because I can see that it's linearly independent. Once I get a, a solution that this is supposed to represent, very easy to pick the coefficients of the first two terms and then check them in the third one. So there's limitations on what that third value will be. So there it is, uh, the BNS, the BRS, uh, utilizing uh, which rows are row reduced to make pivot columns of the original uh, uh, su subset that formed the, uh, the entirety of the column space. So these all would represent the same column space, but they represent it in four different ways. And that's why this subsection is all about these four different uh, ways of looking at things.